Fox is the Pontiac Star Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Woo! Lick a stab and send it, baby. <laughs> Five days in a row. Five days. You can't keep a good man down, Ed. They don't know how lucky they are. They don't. Fucking take your vegetables. Eat your vegetables and take your medicine. Absolutely. Daddy's home. Darn right. Like David Cameron. Oh. Yes. Who do you like more? David Cameron or Ed Campbell? Uh-huh. Daft Cam. Makes sense. Ava? Zaddy. Yeah, David Cameron. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> I think that's the second time you've said Zaddy on the podcast in possibly as many weeks. Yeah, and you know, you never look less revulsed. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's foul. <laughs> the Golden Boy. That's me. Part of the firm. Yes. Cenotaph away at the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be doing a deep dive. Millwall, West Ham, <laughs> Cenotaph. All the heads. Yeah, absolutely. The headhunters. Mm-hmm. The Chelsea headhunters were there. Maybe, I just don't know that. Probably. Probably. Was your team represented? The, yeah. <laughs> Celtic? Yeah, there was lots of Celtic fans there. It was crazy. <laughs> um, Ava Santina. Hi. The Butcher. Yeah, thank you. You all right? Mm, great. How are you? Good. Glad to have you here. Part of the... Uh, Part of the fascism watch along that we're all doing today. Yeah. You and me running through the clips that our esteemed colleague, it's been a bit of a delay to be honest with you. I mean, we're kind of, mm. we're kind of out of the news agenda at this point, but Ed, the quality of the journalism that you produce is so good that I think it holds for at least a week. Excellent. That's he, good. It's he, timeless. <laughs> Expiry date, six days later. But fascism is timeless really, isn't it? Apart from when it comes to the trains. Then it's very timely. On time. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. On time, not timeless. I think it's, it's, I would say it's quite, it's not timeless. It's Fascism. A relatively modern thing. Do you think? Yeah, it only came about in like the 20s. You could probably make quite a good argument that Jesus was a fascist. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare to do that. Well. <laughs> what, what would the argument be? <laughs> well, listen, I'll save that for my, uh, my sermon. <laughs> and as a resident Catholic, you can't come for me on that. Mm. That's true. Um... Will we do a definition of terms? Will we try and establish what fascism is? Or should we just go into this and, and bypass that? I think we do this. I'm not, I'm, not the, <laughs> I'm not in the mood to define fascism. <laughs> Are you two okay? No, I should have had a coffee. I'm on my second. That's why. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll be, we'll be able to sleep tonight. He's jazzed up. There's a point where, you know how caffeine restricts your capillaries? There's a point when it actually opens them up really wide. Oh, no. So you get to a point where you're like so nervous and then you have just a bit more caffeine and it opens them up really wide. I know about this because on TikTok, everyone's talking about it because, well, you can go on TikTok and find out. <laughs> okay. I'm not seeing that. We must have different algorithms. I've started thinking about what that might be to do with and I don't like it. <laughs> shall, we, shall we do some yeah, clips? I think we should do the clips, yeah. Roll the clip. I'm here because I'm English. I'm not affiliated with any group. Like we've heard on the news and the media, they've called people far right EDL. If you look around, I don't see too many bad looking people here today. I purely came here in defence of the realm. This is wrong. We wouldn't have to be here if this protest was banned. Point blank. Don't get me wrong, I'm a free speech activist. Even if it upsets me, I'm going to let you say what you got to say, but there's free speech has limits and today should have been cancelled, full stop. Why, why should today have been cancelled? This is a national heritage, this is a remembrance for everyone that's part of the British Empire. This ain't a white thing either. We've got plenty of coloured Commonwealth soldiers that have fought and died for this country, so this isn't just about the English, this is about a national identity and we're in crisis right now. You mentioned you're a free speech activist and that there are limits. Why, are the, why should the limits be today and not any other day? Well, you see the last few weeks, you've had black shahadas, Taliban and ISIS flags marching down the road. The police have done nothing. You've had Hezbollah, Hamas flags, police have done nothing. You've got them openly chanting for genocide, nothing. Now, if me and other groups that were here were to walk down the road and chant stuff in the opposite, we'd be labelled, we'd be arrested, we'd be thrown in jail. It's a two-tier policing system and that's what we're upset about. Uh Ed, obviously, as a um, fellow traveller with this chap, um, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> you were, you, I just dropped that bit. <laughs> you were also there uh, in defence of the realm. Mm -hmm. uh, success, successful defence of the realm? I think the realm was successfully defended. The Knights of the Templar can go home mm. uh, happily. Yeah, I thought the language, I, th I, thought, I think that clip was very 
very he was using very descriptive emotive language about what they were doing there there's a real emotional purpose to what they were doing there if he, he felt like he had a duty to defend england i suppose and it's interesting that you don't really hear anyone else talk about use those terms apart from people out defending statues there's no no one talks about like i don't know soldier actual soldiers don't talk about defending the realm etc well, they do it about the boats don't they as well you yeah. can find some people down on dungeness i think it's like a, it's, 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 it's the same that's the same page that like they're using really emotive strong language to try and make it seem grander than it is i thought that about suella's um piece in the times i've, I've said it on one of the previous pods that i thought um it deliberately and specifically invoked the imagery and the symbolism of fascism um and i didn't say that lightly but i i think you're what you're talking about is really interesting and there's a very strong there's a there's a strain of um conservative thought about home and place and about uh scruton writes about this in england and elegy about how from shakespeare through wordsworth blake all the way up to now the the in English writing about place is actually writing, it's not just writing about place. You know, you're not just talking about a forest, you talk about Arden and you enchant it. It becomes, an it becomes like an enchanted land and the, the homeland, the realm, then becomes this mystical sort of nirvana type place that has to be preserved, protected and defended. Um, and whilst that's a very uh, literary and perhaps you might say slightly highbrow interpretation, I think you can trace a continuation of that into what my guy there is saying. Mm -hmm. So also as well, he's parroting Suella's lines about two-tier policing. Oh, well. for sure. Yeah, like he's, he's, he's quoting the Home Secretary. There's, Excuse me, the ex-Home Secretary. <laughs> Always the Home Secretary of my heart. Uh -huh. Absolutely. <laughs> um, there's, there was that, and I, I think we'll probably hear the clip from this guy as well, so I don't, maybe I'll keep my pad, no, I'll just say it. The, there's a guy who says uh, in, a, in the purple T-shirt that's like, they have their sacred things, we have our sacred things. Mm -hmm. And that, for me, again, was a very clear repetition of Rishi Sunak, who described the Cenotaph as a, as a sacred place mm -hmm. uh, the day before. It's interesting, the discussion about Englishness as well. Mm. There's a real emphasis on Englishness as opposed to Britishness. And also, as a not-English person, it was quite interesting to see. Someone asked me on Twitter, did, like, did they think it was a reaction to like, my Scottishness? Or did they, were they perturbed by it? They weren't, to be fair. I don't think they... Were particularly bothered that I'm not, I wasn't English. Well, there. yeah, and all your boys were down there as well, weren't they? So. <laughs> but they. Um, Do they make that distinction between English and Scottish? Yeah, they don't. Maybe not explicitly, but I think they do. I think there is like an like an English. Well, to me, I think Englishness is a real tangible thing. I think some things that English people do are very English, and amongst like fellow Scots who live in England, some we observe something, and we're like, that was a bit. That was very English. Could you give an example? Um, Make it personal. Yeah, when you guys, <laughs> you limey fuck. <laughs> I think there's just different, there's different cultural touchstones, different levels of humour, different types of humour. For example, this is the only one that really springs to mind. It's pretty, it's quite a shit one. But um, I went to see the play, the play that goes wrong. It was fucking shit. I would not claim that as English humour. I think it's, I think it's really English humour. I hate it's, that. it's like slapstick. That's but, no, that's what I would say about American humor. Is this an English characteristic here? But I wonder, well, you've got Italian heritage as well. Yeah. So I wonder if you're not as predisposed. I don't know. There's, no, my I, dad I, is so English. He's like in the doomsday. He like, no one left like that same area. But I, th I, th I think there is, I think it's important. <laughs> there's different cultural touchstones and different elements of national identity. And I think actually maybe a frustrating thing is, a frustration to these guys is that Britishness has overtaken or that's a preemptive identity amongst national politics now. In Scotland, you can talk about Scottishness, what how important Scotland is, whereas the Prime Minister, I think, would very rarely talk about how important England is and how like you can only manifest your Englishness in when you're supporting the England football team. Yeah, so that for me is... Um, I, I personally find this subject matter fascinating. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've been trying to do a series here about England and like the English for a while. And dare I say it, I might do something else on it in the future. But I, fi I think English identity is one of the most powerful political forces in this country. And I think very few people understand it. And it's under interrogated, I think. And I think one of the reasons for that is what you're saying there about how Britishness has, has subsumed Englishness is that actually, I think it's a byword. And that when Boris Johnson talks about being British or whoever, the prime minister, 
I think what they actually are kind of referring to is is England because England is so significant in terms of population mm-hmm. size, but because of the nature of our uh, nation state involving the Irish and the Scottish and the Welsh, you you can't say England, right? Even you, though you can't say England, you get arrested, even put in jail. You get thrown in jail, you're arrested, arrested, thrown in put jail. In jail. Um, because obviously you're excluding all those people and you'll piss all those people off. Um, but I, the interesting thing for me and what I was going to say there is uh, one of the reads, I think, on this group of people who have a very extreme interpretation of what it means to be English and perhaps one of the reasons why they didn't have a problem with you, the fact you're Scottish and you think those two things are oppositional to each other is that when they say English, they're not talking about people who live in England. They're talking about people that are white. Yes, no, that's a good point, actually. That is true. Because they're talking about us, amongst us, the English, as opposed to People in the past didn't exactly who, they, who they assumed to not be white. Exactly That's that. a good point. Exactly that. Who, who you know, large parts aren't white, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's a very diverse coalition of people there. But it's hard to get a good shot for them because there are a lot of white people on it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. They're literally like, oh, hang on, hang on, Steve, move on the frame a bit. But then, <laughs> then do, do you remember the chance it was like, they were chanting at the police, you're not English anymore. Mm-hmm. It, was like, it was like a betrayal. You betrayed your country mm-hmm. right. by not letting me fuck the Senate off. You Which betrayed the country. is absolutely one of the... Um, is a rich, rich vein of um, fascist motivation and political manipulation is that narrative of betrayal. And one that can, if whipped up appropriately, can become very vengeful and uh, effective politically. Mm-hmm. Show we have another clip? Next mm. clip. Roll the clip. Um, I came in as well because um, uh, Tommy Robinson put the call out for us to defend memorials, defend statues from uh, far left and Islamic uh, marches ac- across London. I'm quite concerned about um, the attacks on some of the statues and and the um, and the fact that English people feel uncomfortable getting out an England flag in our capital city. So I think it's it's a good good to get together and, and peacefully assert our, our rights as, as Englishmen and, and as British people. Obviously, uh, Ed, my guy there fucking dripped out. Absolutely. Drippy. Best dressed man on the day. Uh, other than Honestly, that's not true. Other than yourself. I made this, call, I made this point to um, Jem, who was, who was the videographer, who was with me all day on Saturday. Also Did an it. absolute fucking legend. Phenomenal job. There is a real style element to like football hooliganism. Get they the badge in. Get the badge in. But the people dripped out like barber jackets, like kind of really like nice, expensive looking like Tommy Shelby style hats. Like they didn't just look shit. Like they all looked really like smart. And I thought it was an interesting facet to like the football looking culture. What, because the white working class are normally, uh, that's normally they've got like a... <laughs> Obviously that's not what I mean. They're in rags. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to entertain they're that in... as a bit. That's not what I was they're saying. All, uh, but, but they all... haven't got any shirts, so they actually just wear an England flag instead. Yeah, that's, that's what uh, I meant. And they're covered yeah. in beans. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. That was the point I was making. I didn't realize, I didn't realize ah. people knew how to tie their fucking shoes. <laughs> oh, covered in beans. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he was talking about when he was saying there's a difference between the English and the Scots <laughs> English people just go out dressed in beans <laughs> fucking weird it's Scottish people it's too cold in Scotland you can't wear beans <laughs> no matter how hard you try my, my bean jumper <laughs> um, locks out the vitamin D as well you, know, you need to absorb as much as you can can't be going out wearing beans absolutely um, anyway my man who wasn't wearing beans <laughs> as much as he'd like because you can't even say your English anymore. Yeah. Um, he he can't, even, <laughs> can't even dress in beans yeah. without getting arrested and thrown in jail. <laughs> but he's... How long can you be dressed in beans for? Not long. Because they'd slide off. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, then, so then you're just in tomato, aren't you? You're just in tomato you just sauce at that point. You get in a bath with the beans. You stand yeah. up. That's your bean soup. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got a good... <laughs> Every English person has a bean bath by their front door. It's so weird. Uh, English it's be- so weird. English people are naked in the home and then they want to go out. They get in the bean bath and they walk out the door. I remember when I first moved into a flat in London mm. and I said to my flatmate, what's that? And he was like, it's your bean bath. <laughs> <laughs> What? And he's like, he's already dressed in his bean suit. <laughs> <laughs> and he obviously expected you to contribute to that, the flat's bean stipend. Oh, I, fund, I owe him a lot of money. <laughs> to, fund, to fund the bean stockpile. That's, that's, the, that's why uh, energy bills are so expensive. It's mm. Keeping that bar I didn't, I didn't realise you have to pay for uh, beans too. Yes. <laughs> Council tax, water bills, beans. <laughs> Do you keep yours warm? 
Yeah. Well, yeah, you have to. Otherwise, you can't get you, a cold bin bath. Yeah, if you get a cold bean bath and then go outside, you will catch a chill. But they go you? off quicker if you. Um, yeah. But you're wearing them, so you don't eat them. Yeah. Yeah. People that do that are freaks. On what you said about the flag, <laughs> what do you think about that? Because they're. I'm going to say something deeply unpopular once you're done talk, laughing about the bean suit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, he is. He is. A, he's quite right about the. The St. George's Cross. You can't just get the St. George's Croc, Croc excuse me, <laughs> cross out and walk down the street with it, right? I mean, let's look at like Emily Thornbury when, you know, someone was flying the St. George's Cross outside their, their house. Oh, yeah. And, you know, she, she mocked that. Um, but then she got panned for it. She did get Rightly panned so. for it. Outside of the football, you don't see that flag. And I mean, the argument for that is that it has been commandeered by the EDL, right? So it, you know, it's got a connotation to it. But what he has said in isolation is not wrong. I think there's been a move now, or I've noticed across London, above like town halls, there is like a St. George's flag. I think they've always been there, hun. Like, but, I, even, but, even, but okay, well. It's the English flag. But, but as in then, I think that's good then. So people can still fly it in like a civic context. And I think that's quite important. Mm. It's kind of re that it's still there. That it's like you can show national pride for England in a context that isn't far right. It was in, over in, in Brixton, I think they have it. it yeah. It's a very multicultural area. Well, my mum's church flies it. Mm -hmm. But I'm just thinking in terms of like, yeah, if you, if you had turned up at that march and you were getting out a flag or you started waving it in someone's face, and it, normally that is accompanied. Like, mm -hmm. When we have seen examples of this where people have been told to put it away, they are doing it in a way that is provocative, right? They're trying to, yeah. you know. But, Brought people up. Yeah. But, but that's what I mean by what he's saying is not actually wrong. But then maybe we need to detoxify the St. George's Cross. Yeah, completely. Um, I, think, I think it's a projection, to be honest with you. I think uh, the, only, the only reason people associate it with far-right extremist politics and then the national sporting teams is because I think there's something within uh, English culture which is kind of a, um, a re uh, 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 an explicit rejection of national pride and patriotism that we kind of find a, a really good example is if you contrast how an American feels about America with how an English person feels about England mm. or how a British person feels about Britain. The, 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 you know, you do not get people crying singing the national anthem at sports fixtures in the way every that they sports fixture uh, yeah that's a good point you know like, every single day and you don't have children pledging no, allegiance to great britain you get in school the liverpool fans booing the national yeah, anthem yeah, yeah. is 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 what you get and we are much that more that is national pride to boo the national anthem we fought long and hard for our freedom to be able to boo the national anthem you did that is your right in free speech right yeah but I don't, I don't think saying it's, it's not private. Oh, Scouts Sc Sc not English, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't. Like, Sc like Liverpool people, not every person from Liverpool, but Scousers might say Scouts not English. So it's like Liverpool pride as opposed to English pride, isn't it? Um, I think that there are there are large swathes of the country who um, enjoy their right to, to boo the national anthem. Yeah. And also, there is a very English thing of... Um, criticizing the monarchy, but the second that anyone else does, like a, like the Americans, if they criticize the monarchy, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh -huh. Only I get to say what Good happened luck to going Diana. to school today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think there's this, um, I think there is a, a difference in the way that we feel about the, the flag. And I think it's actually just up to us, to be honest with you. I think like, I, I, I would, I think you can have the St. George's Cross wherever you want it and it's just about how you use it, proclaim it and actually reclaim it from extremist politics because the only reason the only reason they're able to occupy that space is because it's a vacuum mm -hmm. they, they occupy a vacuum where others are not as patriotic, nationally proud and so you end up in the unfortunate situation where they're basically the only people who are talking about Englishness or, or, or projecting anything onto Englishness are extremists like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also it was interesting, the guy said he was there because Tommy Robinson did yeah. the call out. So regardless of what Tommy Robinson said about he was there to document, <laughs> it, it, it really undermines Tommy Robinson's point that he was there. I was, I'm here as a journalist and to document what's going on, pretending that none of us can understand subtext mm. and that his followers can't understand subtext. He was there and that's why mm. lots of a good proportion of those people turned out. Really interestingly, there's a... Um, a march against anti-Semitism this weekend. Mm -hmm. 
and a lot of Jews are very, very upset uh, about the fact that Tommy Robinson has attached onto it and yeah. called his followers to attend that march. Um, they're, I mean, they're trying to disavow him as much as possible, but it, you know, it provokes a question, doesn't it? Because Tommy is well followed and has the ability to mobilize thousands of people out onto the street. So it actually poses a very serious question for you as the organizers of that march are, where if you cannot mobilize enough people to render the Robinson lot a minority, you end up in a very awkward situation where, let's say, possibly anywhere between 5 and 50% of the people on that march are fucking Democratic Football Lads Alliance, mm -hmm. EDL yeah. types, and you then go, holy fuck, we've basically mobilized the far right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Doesn't take a lot, though, does it, to mobilize the far right? No, just, yep. a, just a statue under a vague threat. They love of, a day out. Just a bean suit. <laughs> <laughs> just head to toe. If you threaten to take away their bean baths, they will be out. That's something you could really, really easily convince someone who's not from Britain of. <laughs> We've just convinced you of it, Ed. That's true, actually. Oh, sorry, you are from Britain. There's me. There's me doing the Britain English thing. Yeah, absolutely. No, I am British. Should we do another clip? Yeah. Roll the clip. I think that's bullshit, mate. I think everyone should be treated exactly the same. Yeah. You know, like if, if I was now start acting up, I'd, I'd soon be jumped on very quickly. It should happen in both ways. It's as simple as that. You know, we're, we're not here to cause trouble unless someone else causes trouble. But it seems like we do get the sort of the sharp end of the stick when it comes to like, oh, well, they're, they're, they're far right and that. I'm not, you know, far right about me. I'm just here, you know, I, I was here last time with the Black Lives Matter with the ripped the statue down. I don't care about black, white or silver. I'm here to protect the statue because it's, you know, it's, it's sacred to our country. Simple as that. Now this, remember it's weekend, remember Sunday, Armistice Day, exactly the same thing. So if we're protesting, you've got to treat us with the same respect as you treat them. And I think that they're more a bit more out of order than we are, to be fair. They, they, they've been attacking police. They've been throwing things. They've been chucking fucking like, things into crowds and stuff like that. We haven't done nothing like that and we don't we don't expect to do nothing like that but we will meet anger with anger symbol is that this is a really common refrain uh, amongst these people which you heard it in your interviews i heard it when i spoke about it on lvc at the weekend people calling in being like i was there i'm not far right and uh i actually think it's one of the defining things of the british far right <laughs> 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 is their insistence that they are just common sense um, British patriots, mm -hmm. right? Um, so to, to quote one of the people that I spoke to at the weekend, it was, um, he said, I'm not far right. I'm, I'm a normal person. The Conservative Party is left wing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm just a normal, normal right. And it's like the denial of their political position mm -hmm. in relation to other political positions within the country, um, which I find very revealing. You know, we've seen the images, right, from the march. We've seen the people doing Nazi salutes. We've seen people with swastikas tattooed on them. We've seen them chanting, Allah is a pedo. These three things taken together, for me, signify an ultra-nationalist, right-wing political position. Mm -hmm. You would say that, though, wouldn't you? Because you're a fucking lefty. Yeah. <laughs> As a yeah. member of the Conservative Party, you yourself <laughs> are left wing. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm woke. Because I'm woke like that. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah, no, there was a lot of like, the, the most common refrain was like, everyone supports Suella. Everyone supports her comments. Everyone supports us here. This is a normal thing to do. And then you'd say, oh, the um, plural, plural, plurality of um, people think Suella Bravin should not be Home Secretary anymore. And they're like, no, 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 she should. And then they ignore it. Like they're confront. They're believe it or not, they don't. They they don't take all, They don't receive that information and change their mind. Yeah. Well, do you know what you should start doing to them is what the the football fans like to do to some other people, which is like you'll be like, oh yeah, I quite enjoy the beautiful game, and they'll go, oh okay, yeah. What did Harry Kane have for breakfast? You should start <laughs> turning those questions on them. So okay, you love Suella Braverman so much, right? What was she wearing last week in the comments? <laughs> um, you know. Answer her bean suit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or, oh, you're you're a member of the far right. Okay, who's your favourite Nazi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Name one member of the SS. <laughs> Do it. Okay. Wow. Can can we talk a little bit about this though? I um. Are your favourite Nazi? No, I don't have one. Obviously, <laughs> there's a really interesting split in the British far right around uh, Israel and Gaza. And you have your, <laughs> you have your old-fashioned, like traditional neo-Nazis who hate the Jews, like 
straight up hate the Jews and so end up in a position of advocating for a free Palestine. Mm-hmm. I saw one of them had been tagged into like someone had tagged them in like a load of different far right goes on Twitter and it was, um, you know, calling for like support for Israel. And one of them replied being like, why am I tagged into this with these Zionist shills? I believe in a free Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the more modern British far right which has gone, no, 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 no. We actually like the Jews now because in this kind of clash of civilizations, Mm -hmm. they are in conflict with Muslims Mm -hmm. who we view as the ultimate enemy. And there's an interesting strain, I think, and parallel between that group of extremists and the people on the extreme left who both racialize Jews as white. And they view them as, within a clash of civilizations, as um, either from the right-wing perspective, a bastion against Islamism, or from a more extreme left-wing position, as colonizers and oppressors. Mm. Yeah. That is interesting. My enemy's enemy is my friend. Yeah, kind of. And I um, I know someone who's currently undercover uh, working on the far right, and he was saying how fascinating it is watching them in their meetings, trying to figure out whether they hate Muslims or Jews more. And, hell. and figuring out how they where they need to sit on this. I should have asked them. Yeah, that's quite a good question. But first question should be that, shouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think that would be. Uh, I think that question may have jeopardised your personal yeah, safety. Well, yeah. yeah, and also, it was also the thing was like we're we're not here to cause trouble. If they cause trouble, we are here to defend them, which proved out to be a lie. Well, yeah, because then they tried to bomb the cenotaph. Destroy. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, should, they tried to fuck the cenotaph. Yeah, but they also then tried to catch up to the Palestine march, right? And mm-hmm. the police were then playing this cat and mouse game, keeping the two apart from each other. Mm. And they were like keeping them within the pubs on the Boxer Bridge Road. Were any of them veterans? None of the people I spoke to. Um, yes, actually, there were. There was so one guy who didn't want to speak to us. He said he was there representing West Ham and his military regiment, so he was an ex-soldier. He wasn't. But then, but then they're also there. Not everyone. Not everyone there was. A far right football hooligan. Well, no, well. I just think that if you're going to go really out of your way to defend the cenotaph, and you've got, you know, should you not have served for a little bit? If you care that, you know, if you're going to uh, give, what, what is the ultimate defence of the cenotaph? But serving a tour in the Middle East. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I do. I do know what you mean. Because on the flip side of that, I go well. It's a hunk of rock that is symbolic. Yeah. But then, you know, I can valiantly say, well, I gave the ultimate sacrifice, which was a family member, into the army very recently. Right? What did you do? Where were you, Derek? Uh-huh. You were doing fuck all. Why, why weren't you setting up your cousin? Yeah. Which side of the Nazis were you on? Like, that's, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think that would have been very... One, one soldier I spoke to, he was... So he was actually kind of talking... He was talking about the Palestine march, but I think the same applies to the far right people, was he was saying, Remembers Weekend is quite a traumatic time for um, ex-soldiers, because... You're, all you're thinking about is your service, mm. about friends you've lost, about trauma you've experienced during combat. So you're you're in, you're not in the best place anyway, and you're supposed. You, and what you want to do is go to the cenotaph and observe the silence and like catch up with friends and like reflect on your time. And he was saying, "So I hope the Palestine people, the Palestine marchers, don't disrupt that for that reason." Mm. But the same also the same also applies to the the people who rammed the cenotaph. If you were a veteran who was there in solemnity, like you could be very old standing there that would have been horrific to be your your entire saturday or remembrance day would have been ruined and if you are there claiming ultimate respect for these people well they undermine that i i don't i don't believe them believe it or not mm. yeah i think a word also has to be said for um what a possibly radicalizing force it will be to have your best friends killed by the taliban serving mm. in Afghanistan and I think whilst there's a well first of all I make it explicit I know we're taking the piss out of these people and actually it's not a very useful thing to do the, the thing the useful thing to do is to extend compassion and understanding to these people to try and pull them out of it um, but if you've served and your two best mates have been blown up in an IED or you've watched you've cradled your best friend's body as he bleeds out mm. I totally understand why you would develop a deep seated hatred of Muslims I, like I understand it and so for those people to be there, I think is not quite the same as the football hooligans who essentially are kind of just cottoning on to hate without having that direct radicalizing experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Um, yeah, it's sad. I, I always like the black cabbies who drive the, the mm. old well, boys up on the procession for one, free. I one guy um, stopped his bus and got out. 
for the minute silence. He like oh, he, really? he pulled up alongside Parliament Square and got out his um got out his bus and stood like I love all head, that with his head bowed. It was, it was quite touching. You know who are great at the Chelsea pensioners? They are the, they 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 break my heart. They're so sweet. You know, yeah, just they are. a bunch of old veterans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Live in Chelsea Hospital. Yeah, and they're just all mates. I yeah. do, I could cry. The now. uniforms are smart. They're lovely. Yeah, and they wear their uniforms out. Like you can see them around. Um, there's a pub I go to in Soho, not that one, different pub. And they, they like to drink in there as well because there's, there's a sing-along. Oh. Um, you know, it's all like que sera, sera and, mm-hmm. you know, my old man's a dustman. They love it. Yeah. Is that time? Mm-hmm. That's time, I think. Okay. Uh, Ava. Thank you. Ed. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs>